it it acted up last time, but well, I think this would be good. You save that airfare by you a computer. <laughs> I know. I need, a new one. I need a new computer. We're working on it. We're working on it. Hello, Ben. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, people. Hello. Whoever's we're listening. Watching we're watching movies. We're watching movies. We're, we're, we're keeping... talking about a movie today. We, we're we're we're, we're, we're more quite quite date. a movie. We're more up to date than we were for our month late Top Gun review. We're only like a week and a half into the release of this. movie. Nothing came out last week. I wasn't going to watch Minions, uh, Rise of Gru, or whatever that. Well, but we got was Thor called. coming up. We should we should probably see that and review that. We will be seeing that. I, I'm seeing it Thursday. Whoa, Thursday! You are you are a true cinephile. A true. I don't you, know. You are the you are the up to date cinephile. I'm, I'm literally seeing a 3 p.m. show. Because they, they be do the that one. now. Yeah, That's it's the first, the first one. one. Yeah, why not? Man why not get that out of You're excited for that scene where Chris Hemworth, Hemsworth gets I, his clothes stripped off. You know what? I've already seen part of it. I want to see more. You yeah. See more. <laughs> I don't think they're going to show his dong, though. No, unfortunately not. I mean, but why not but I, I have heard. If, I have if heard. It's so delightful, it makes women pass out. I mean, I have heard ass that you get to see Chris oh, Hemsworth that's, ass. Yeah, that's something. That's a, let's you know, a, a, let's give people so we'll talk. We'll probably talk about this passing out joke once we see the movie. But I find it thoroughly unconvincing in the trailer. Like they all pass out at like different moments. Let and me, t- like, let me it's, tell you something. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a little uh, it's a little broad. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's, say it's just broad. a little vaudeville. I mean, um, I wish I wish seeing a naked person would make me pass out. That seems sure. like it'd be pretty. I don't know what that person would have to look like. I mean, it would have maybe to, if they had like the alien coming, like something just, coming out of their stomach. You know, and and maybe it's the whole body, maybe it's the physique of it all. But I mean, uh, then seeing male genitalia, well, I don't find that I've never, and I don't think anyone finds it like glorious or attractive. What well, are these people like in some god world or something? Haven't they seen some wild ass shit? <laughs> they. Have yeah, exactly. They're clearly not on Earth. They're cl- they're clearly in. Maybe some... it's deformed. Maybe the fainting is not in attractiveness. Yeah, maybe it's. Maybe it's... <laughs> I, you know, I, I feel lucky in my life. I've never fainted. I've never once fainted. I've never fainted. No. So I don't. I can't say what would make me faint. Yeah. Nothing get the has, get the vapors and. No. Yeah. Nothing has succeeded so far. No. Nothing. Yeah. Sometimes I get a little bit uh, lightheaded when I stand up too quickly. <laughs> that, you know. Dude, that, so, at our at our age, that's that's what'll do. So it. that's. I mean, that's a <laughs> that's a thing. You know, I don't know. Yes. So it's interesting to think about um, what it is. Yeah, we'll have to speculate. On that I mean, more actually, once we've uh, seen. Because I just I just saw the trailer before seeing um, this movie. This movie. Well, and about. it's funny because this actually like links up because in this movie you have fainting, you have uh, uninhibited reactions of pleasure to uh, the gyrations of someone's hips, uh, and you you have all of that. You have happening. you have um, cutaways where um, the ADR makes it sound like Tom Hanks is the voice <laughs> of God. <laughs> Like and it's funny because I don't usually notice that stuff. Like no. I'm, I'm not technically you're you're much more technically savvy. Sure. I mean you bit. live with an editor who I'm I sure do. notices all this shit. Oh, and we watched it together. So, uh, but it was... like even I noticed moments where it was clear they had to cut away and ADR in some of his lines. Ooh, it is right. It... I mean, this was like it was like pretty evident to the point that the sound, like I even caught it on the sound, which like. You'd think they'd be able to solve for because usually they can. Like, like I said, I very rarely, like I know there's always a bunch of ADR in movies. I know yeah. that that's just something yeah, they do. But I very rarely do I notice this it. movie felt like an onslaught of distraction so that you wouldn't notice or anything that felt weird or as you're saying. Uh, that you notice is bad, a technically bad moment, is just interweaved into the chaos of this movie. And it only sustains for about an hour, and then they slow down, and then you're like, wait a second, Uh, these clashing tones don't mix together. They, They... deviate from narrative narration voice like it is a we're wild talking, experience we're talking about elvis El- i'm sure elvis everyone Foz knows Lerman's exactly what, they, what we're talking about. uh spoiler he dies i mean i, mean, I don't can we spoil this movie? he dies this is sort of a titanic and it was situation. really he's, funny he's because it, it's they they handle it so poorly because basically his, history him and they, keep him alive they do not he, do that which actually i wouldn't put past them I and mean, why why wouldn't you keep the, elvis alive this is operating on, <laughs> on such a d- different plane of existence 
existence that if he had been alive at the end of this, I would have believed it. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the big reveal should have been he actually is the colonel, right? They're the same person. It's like a Kaiser Soze. <laughs> he was in his reveal. mind. It was Fight Club. He was <laughs> in right, his mind right, the entire Fight Club. time. He's both of them. He's both of them. <laughs> right? Which, in a way, is kind of one of the many themes, motifs of the movies. Is like, are they the same person? Are they a different person? What is the sort of nature of their symbiosis? Mm -hmm. I mean, but this movie... One of the many, as you said, because this one can't I mean, choose I mean, one. I, I that's mean, for what sure. What I like about this movie is that it's about everything. Everything. It, I mean, literally, you get the sense that there was no idea that was had that was not... I wouldn't say followed through on, because it's not clear that any of them are followed through on. None. None are followed but are, through, but many are There is no introduced. idea that wasn't like somehow just teed up, at least, or like kind of teased out there. Um... I, there's, I don't even know how to approach this movie. It is wild. I don't, it's I don't really even difficult. know how to talk about this movie because, I mean, so like the first thing you see is like the logo, right? Which says like a, a beauty, love, truth. It says a bunch of shit and it says a life lived in fear is a life half lived. And it strikes me as nothing so much as that something that a teenager would scrawl on the inside of their trapper yeah. keeper, <laughs> which kind of tells you what you need to know. Like I feel like it, I feel like Baz Luhrmann, wittingly or unwittingly, I can't say, is telling you who he is right away. That he is. Just I think he's who, telling you who Baz Luhrmann is, not who Elvis is. No, absolutely. Is. Yeah, because because it is just. The level of sentimentality is so high, yeah, that it kind of it's like, but it but it makes sense that this is the guy that made Romeo plus Juliet. It's it does. Just, this is very this movie, which is you know a better movie, right? Obviously, but it, but that level of sort of youthful romantic sentimentality, you know, I grew up around a bunch of weepy ass choir theater kids. Uh, as I know, you've you've spent time with such, I have such types, very much, and uh, you know, they loved Moulin Rouge, right? They, they love Romeo plus Juliet. These movies have a kind of a high romanticism and sort of earnest, youthful something. I don't even know emotionality or sentimentality <clears throat> to them that, like, under another circumstance, I guess I could find refreshing. And I will say that. If you if you want to say one thing in favor of this movie, you won't see anything else like it. It's very that's weird. true, and it's not. Um, although it's interesting because in a way, even I have to take what I say back because the movie is so self conscious, right, of what it is, and in fact, it tells you right yeah. up front that it's going that this is actually a superhero movie. Like he's basically making a superhero movie about an actual yeah. person. Well, and this is and, and he mostly says, and, he, and 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 there's this whole theme about him being obsessed with Captain Marvel that yes. comes up pretty early, and that's yeah. a motif that repeats a couple times. Once again, it's picked up and dropped like every other idea in this movie. It kind of comes and then it goes, goes away for a long time. That comes back real quick and then it goes back away yeah. again. But I think it does tell you. That Luhrmann develops very self consciously. He also makes continuous references to Star Trek, so he's basically going to make a science fiction superhero movie about a historical biopic historical he's, figure. He's which so is, which is kind of, I guess, it's in a way it's kind of like our conversation about Lightyear, where it's like I can understand why, like in a two sentence praise, he's like we're going to make a superhero yeah. science fiction movie, but it's in the past about a historical figure. I can see why someone would think. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Like, that's yeah. kind of high concept interesting. Yeah. But uh, it does wash out at a very... It does wash out. It doesn't hold weight. And, and sort of... It, it's, exhausting. Yeah, it's exhausting. I mean, <laughs> it's exhausting in a lot of ways. But what you're bringing up is very true. Is Lerman, it, just to break it down, in, in talking about something that's fanciful, something that's mythological, he believes in the mythology of Elvis Presley. Uh, it, it, whether that is... A personal belief or it was kind of uh, attached in if you're going to make a biopic about Elvis Presley with the whole family and their sense of control and preservation of that person uh, then you have to integrate all of that those notions that that he was like a superhuman that he was a, a, a myth a legend a, a rock legend uh, the, the king of rock and roll if you will and the movie hundred percent a victim of the colonel too. a hundred percent yes a victim, a victim of the and um, uh, and uh, totally 
like gloss over the sense in which his sort of cultural appropriation might be problematic. He's a yes. friend to well, BB King. He's a friend. He's a to friend. Big Mama Thornton. Big Mama Thornton. And like, yeah. I, honestly, I mean, you know, I do think. I mean, I, it's hard to know what to think. I, I do think that Elvis was an honest and a true appreciator of that culture. Like oh, absolutely. I, like I, I, like I do believe of, that as well. There were plenty of like Pat Boons in the world who like cynically tried to profiteer. Like, I, I don't think that Elvis was... I think a, it's a complicated relationship yeah. that, again, the movie introduces but never goes anywhere with. This is what I'm saying. Lerman... Yeah, but, like, but like in terms of any questions of race, Elvis is the good guy yes. in this movie. And the only thing he does that's bad is not enough, but he feels tortured about it. That's what they allude to, and they, they well, bring it... I think it they can... make it pretty explicit, like yeah. how he wants to do a protest that the colonel doesn't want him. Yeah. And then as, as he's sort of in, in the drug throws as he descends, like he sees uh, Mahalia Jackson telling him to come, and he doesn't come because the colonel says, don't come, but he's yeah. tortured yeah. about it. Tortured. So, I mean, the extent to which he's like doing something bad on questions of race and politics, it's that he's not doing enough, but he wants to. He wants to. But the colonel won't let him. Yeah, and, and again, these are... The, God, as, as we talk about several notions, superhero movie, uh, cultural appropriation, it gets into complexities of his love life, it gets in... All of these things could be one movie in themselves and Baz Luhrmann is just it's an onslaught of technicality it's an onslaught of style it's exhausting because Luhrmann fancies himself I've I've called him the I mean he fancies himself uh, even even though I, th I think he's straight he's the gay Michael Bay like because he, he well, I is, do like it that he has a bunch of dudes also like on the sly salivating over Elvis. Yes, and I like it how Cody Spit McPhee has become like the the maybe gay, uh, the ambiguously yeah. sexual person, <laughs> right? Like yeah. he's like, oh, we need a guy who's like unsure about his sexuality, but might be kind of gay, but yeah. can't really yeah. embrace it. Get well, us that guy. But but it's it, what I mean by the like, gay yeah, is yeah, I like that guy. He is, seems like a good, uh, he's a good actor. I don't know if he's a good human. No, yeah, but he's, sure. he's, he's a good actor. So I I hope he secures as many bags he can on the ambiguously gay uh, train. I absolutely. But he he's got that 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 persona. He's got that physicality to him that can be used for such. But when I say he's the gay Michael Bay but Lerman. It's his flamboyancy. He yeah, like as yeah, as Gang Michael Bay is good. Uh, as as you lean in, as he leans into say Romeo plus Juliet, he leans into the the rhythms of its language and hyper stylizes it with with everything around it, rather than getting really at the heart of it. Uh, same thing with like Moulin Rouge. I mean, it's it's hyper kinetic. I mean, he knows how to slow down in some of these films, but then you see the 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 lavishness of something like Great Gatsby, and you're like, wait, I, I, I understand what he's doing, but uh, in in order to get into the rhythms of S. Scott Fitzgerald and that, that world and to show you it, but he never almost leaves it, and so it, it becomes kind of a hypocritical, and I think the same thing happens with Elvis. He becomes a bit hypocritical in lavishing on the idea of the mythos, legend status of Elvis, while Austin Butler is gr trying to ground, humanize, bring struggle and they clash through the I, entire honestly, movie i will say this i liked butler and i thought in he's an, no in he's a, fan in another fantastic. movie like i thought he i mean he carries the movie he right does. He, it's it's i mean it's a biopic about elvis of course he's basically in every scene oh, but he but he's shot. out acting everybody in every scene he's got shades of of subtlety and mannerism watch i mean the makeup job, costuming, everything around Butler and fashioning him, he also then brings a soul to it, and it's fascinating. Yeah, to no, watch. no, he he is, yeah, he he. Uh, credit to him. Yes, right? like I I think he deserves absolutely a lot of respect for trying to take this movie and give it some sort of a center. Yeah. Which it is so resistant to having. It does not want to. It just wants to constantly. It never spin, lets you stop. It's spin it's off. Its literally, axis. literally spin. Like but, they, they even have the like transitions. It's like film transition. The movie. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, there's a couple of different directions I want to go, and I think are worth going with this movie. But let, let's let's stay on the stylistic direction for a while because I feel like that's where yeah. we're at, anyways. Yeah. I mean, what's funny about Lerman is he seems to know and forget periodically at least in this movie when that he can let it breathe and when to let it breathe yeah like 
so I was I knew immediately I was in he was he was going to fuck it up when you know Cody Spick McPhee's character brings uh, the first single it's all, that's all right mama which is an electric song it holds up to this day great yeah, recording great. probably the best thing Sun ever recorded <laughs> that's right? true um, I mean and they recorded Johnny Cash they recorded yeah. Blue Suede great they great record, things I mean clearly a, an iconic record label yeah just electric it's an electric song you hear it and you immediately understand okay this is something new. Right, and that's a moment where he could have let it breathe and just played the song and had people react to it. But instead, it becomes this hyper techno. He gets into some dubstep. People are rapping. It's yeah. just like it's like uh, contrast that with another scene that he gets right, where uh, he just lets the you know young little Richard play Tutti Frutti and they yes. watch him. That is right? a great which is scene. a much better scene because that's also electric. I mean, it's an electric song, an electric performer, right? Yeah. Young Little Richard was just uh, blew people's minds. People he didn't did. know what to do with this guy. Just a rock and roll legend, right? And they let it breathe. They let they let us watch him perform and see you know Elvis and BB King and the people in that room respond to it. As as you're saying, they almost let all the black set pieces breathe more even even uh the guitarist in the beginning when he's at a young age he sees him i forget i, I forgive me i forget his name he's a legend he was yeah, a legend yeah, blues yeah. blues guitarist and uh they let um, even though they cut away they let the song breathe they let his articulation yes. and singing breathe but they never let elvis breathe like even when they get into like uh jailhouse rock and uh like hound uh, ain't nothing but a hound dog like uh near in in the the uh the a special couple, it's like almost the, montagey and they, a couple of the performance scenes they at least let him perform for a minute but then they break it up in this stylistic yes. form like when he's uh performing and gyrating you know once he's like you can't wave a finger and he's doing it at the the, the stadium and uh they they would they do these flash bulb lerman-esque uh stops to the action and we should be feeling every single movement, every single uh, dynamic energy shift that Elvis was doing to, to understand why he was so electric. But Lerman, almost in his instincts, takes away from that. It's it's yeah, wild but, to but me the decisions said, he makes. He knows, he knows that at some point you should stop. Yeah. Right. But even then, like like there was a there was he would just give up some of these moments like way too quick like i thought the scene right yeah. before um right before the first performance at the hayride where they're out there singing spiritual together yeah like if he'd let that breathe for a little bit longer stayed with the family kept it just that little spiritual i agree it would have been much more affecting because i could feel myself starting to react to it emotionally i'm like oh this is very moving could and then, be and then it just gets wild again yeah right and and it's like i don't have a problem i mean I, we both loved, you know, Everything Everywhere All at Once, which I'm sure is yeah. a movie we'll come back to over and over again and talk about. It. And that's yeah. a movie that is frenetic, but then slow, then frenetic, then slow. I don't have a problem with using the tools of cinema to I, get frenetic and crazy, but it's like you can't. The movie, this movie, first of all, another movie that's just too, too fucking long. It's two, two hours, hours 40. 40. Well, and, 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 and like, 20 minutes in, I knew exactly what the movie was going to be like, and it was frustrating. Well, but also, it commits one of our number one biopic sins, right? Which is, we got to tell this whole life story. Yes. And you could, you that is a sin. You could have picked so many chunks, right? Like, the obvious, like, one obvious ending that the movie has available to it is when he does his comeback and he does the special the special right? which that's how the jonathan reese myers miniseries ends with him coming back to do the special and they they survey a lot of his life in that miniseries obviously that was like eight hours or four hours to eight hours i mean i think it was multiple episodes and jonathan reese myers did a really good job and they end they, the, the the end of the series is him doing that song at the end of uh the special and that's where it cuts to black and then it gives you some of the what happened to Elvis after this moment? But you're right. Choose a angle. Choose a moment. They could just do that special, and they could survey his relationship with the colonel. They could survey his relationship with Priscilla. They could survey his relationship with how he's dealing with the loss of his mother. And all of these themes, all of these suggestions that they quickly... they Again, you're like you're saying, they never stop, or they, they are so on the go 
in their energy and pace that you never get a moment to really feel any of these moments, any of these relationships, any of their problematic nature. And it's just going. It's just it's a breakneck speed and it does a disservice to Butler and his humanizing performance. It does a disservice to Elvis as a, a human, it does a disservice to Elvis as a legend. And so I was frustrated the yeah, entire yeah, that's time. It's funny. It's not even effective as hey, geography, right? Because it's no, too, it's not because I mean, I, I mean, I guess it, it, and to whatever extent it's effective, it's just effective because of Butler's performance. Yes. But even then the character is so, is so, beatified in some sense yeah like the, the only yeah. the only things he does that are like bad well he abuses drugs you can't avoid that nobody's going to try to avoid that but it's, it's because, mere but suggestion it, in the beginning of the movie where he's like just take a pill bro like you know in the back of the car and you're it, like what but even then what it's, is this? it's it's yeah it's other people doing it to him he's just this beautiful soul who just wants to please people but he loves you know he, he, he did it for you he did it because he for, did the it love, for, you. for the love. His he played Tom boss, Hanks. He played. Tom Hanks is on another I, level in this I, movie. I mean, <laughs> let's let's be honest. Like Tom Hanks, uh, a, a, a S tier actor, right? One of the greatest actors, screen actors of all time. Yeah. I don't know why he's doing this to himself. I don't know why. I don't know why he he let any of this happen. <laughs> I don't know why he did this. Although he's, yeah, although honestly, he's made some dog movies lately, and, I, and sure, you, and you wonder. I don't know why. Um, yeah, let's not forget the movie he directed and starred in called Larry Crown. Nobody should ever forget it because he should never be forgiven for it. Um, I mean, he makes like, some bad but, but decisions. I mean, it's, it's funny, right? Because I mean, he's he's tried to be. I mean, I, I guess he must like Dave Eggers as a writer, and I like those books, but they haven't. Translated uh-huh. into screen adaptations. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was sad. Sure. I I really wanted to, you know, like I like a hologram for the king. I think that's actually a really great book. But these oh, things yeah. don't always translate across. Oh, they but he don't. did that and circle and both circle. Eggers books. I'm assuming he must like Eggers as a writer. That's, yes, that's, he. I think he was producer. He he he's the one who pushed and those and projects. Those, those, and I like I like Eggers as a writer too. But you know, great books uh, don't always translate. No, it's, it's not. Whatever. I mean, I'm just saying that like. Um, his career been more has been more uneven. Um, yeah, I mean it's just and it's funny, right? Because you have Butler doing everything to be sort of ground and humanize this legendary figure, and then you have Hanks just doing this extremely broad. I mean, obviously, there's so many references to vaudeville and carnivals and. Yeah, I mean, he's funny because it made me think of uh, oh that remake, the remake we watched with Bradley Cooper, Nightmare Alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another another Carney movie. It's fucking great. (laughs) I used to see fucking Carney. But that's like it's just like another thing that's just like looms very large in the movie that it goes away, but it still is like this point of reference. Yeah, there's so many things like that. Yeah, these thematic things. Um, like Katie pointed out that he, uh, Colonel carries a cane, but and then near the end of the movie, Elvis has got a cane, and so it's these. Yeah, are they the same? It's yeah, Darth Vader and notions of similarities. But Elvis gets fat. (laughs) They only let him do that one. That one. It's it is sort of funny how they basically had it end like a few years before he dies and just do that one epilogue scene with him fat clearly yeah. again well and that was and, actually and, that's actually elvis that that was real footage and, yeah clearly. which is when you it, great vocal performance when you watch it it's painful yeah. it's painful to see him but as we're talking about like tom hanks is on i mean he and lerman are in the same movie they're they're doing the same movie they're they're it's this cartoon of a villain like he's like elmer fudd but more sinister Um, that's exactly who he is he's an evil elmer fudd that's what he is and it's wild he's he's a smarter elmer Fudd. he's a smart he's he's uh, machiavellian elmer fudd and i i think there is a story to be told there again i think it's so frayed fragmented and frenetic that you don't really understand the point of view of the colonel you don't understand the point of view of elvis it never really grounds you in anything and i actually think it would have been braver for them too if they were going down this narration road with the colonel to just dedicate it from his perspective and that things happen to elvis that he solely interprets for you and there's shades of that within the movie, but it's not consistent. Well, it's not well, throughout a, the whole that's thing. That's a more interesting and more daring movie. Right? It is. Make a movie that's I agree. an hour shorter, 
and the colonel is the main character and elvis is literally as important as all these other people in the orbit like you see him but he's more of an off-screen character and yeah. it's really about the colonel yeah i think that right? would have been a more that's daring film i mean that's an interesting movie right yeah. that's a movie that you go into and think wow that's that's not the, what we've seen before but instead we get we get a, a shades of that. That's what this movie is. It's just shades of of a hundred different ideas. And it's possible this movie started that way, but the Elvis estate, you can feel their presence throughout this entire film. Uh, oddly, uh, you know, because the explanation, the the not focusing on his marriage to Priscilla. I mean, obviously they're like they talk about it that it was love. No, but in the movie, she when he meets her, she's fourteen years old, and then he. Puts her basically imprisons her on uh, in in Graceland for four years before they can get married. I mean, it's not talked about in the movie. They just bypass it with a, a quick edit that it's four years later from 1959 yes, to 1963. And the, and the first time we see her, she does not appear to be 14. No, exactly not. And so she, and then she, she and then it bypasses at least 10 years older. Than it that. bypasses these problematic nature with the stealing from black artists by making him a friend making him a fellow uh, of the culture and with them and and what's weird to me is even with that sense of control over it they still let slip the incestuous nature that he has with his mother that it's suggested it's weird to me that they have such a sense of control and yet they let those things in why well, what? You, you you have to do a limited hangout, right? Yeah. You know, like, you know, the old Richard Nixon, like, we gotta we gotta throw some people under the bus, right? Sure. You can't take it all out. N no, that's right? true. Right, you can't take it all out, so you have to decide what which ones you just can't avoid and which are the most either... I mean, the mom stuff, I, I, I guess... It, it does, in the movie, it doesn't come off as particularly creepy. Uh, it, there are two scenes with her that I did find creepy. Which ones? Well, uh, at one point, he I mean, maybe gets... I, 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 she's at all, Graceland. I left a couple times to go to the bathroom. She, so there's a scene between him and her at Graceland when she's like trying to manage, and he is about to run off. I think he's upset with how everything is going. And he like leans into her as though he's going to kiss her. Like oh, I mean, they are yeah, they're they're like he, they're whispering sweet nothings like to, at cheek to cheek, and I was like, "This is weird. Okay, this yeah, is no, a strange weird. suggestion." Yeah, I, what's funny, going on? It's funny, by the way. I, just just as an aside, I very rarely like I always try not to leave the theater. <laughs> this one's I'll hard. This one's hard. But this one, I, not only that, I didn't try. I was like, I don't need to see all this movie. I could probably leave it now and know everything I need to know. I did stay exactly. to the end, but I, I definitely took a couple like uh, well, this, you know, this uh, movie. Health breaks. If you know about yeah. Elvis, you learn nothing about in this movie. If you knew nothing about Elvis, I still don't think you learn much of anything. It's such a weird blend of interpretation that you you could walk away being incredibly confused. Yeah, but it's, it's okay. So there's the mother shit, but like inter yes. So so we allied a lot of it. You have the drug abuse, which is unavoidable for all kinds of reasons. Well, but, the, but still, but, but still then they makes make it, that it's more sad. They uh, they make they make Priscilla to be like a progressive woman. She's like, it's not the women you're sleeping with, Elvis. It's the drugs, and I'm like, eh, I think it's probably all of it. <laughs> it's but, probably but even all then, of it. Like the cheating is just very. It's kind of glossed over, and it's, like everything bad that happens happens because he's tortured, and he's tortured because of the colonel. Colonel, yeah. and and maybe because. Of the sort of wages of fame and wanting to be loved by the masses, but the, right, but shit like that. But he's never, like, like Elvis never does. He is never evil. No, right. And, the, the, no. and you only see him really angry once at like his people who are taking advantage of him, being like, "Don't, don't, don't talk about what I do to make money for you and my family." You know, he gets slightly angry. Well, right but there. but then, and it's also a mixture where they have Priscilla being like, "I don't care about the money," and I'm like, Ho "Horse shit!" That family definitely cared about the but, money. But I mean, th I have less issue with that because that is what she would say, right? I mean, you would say that, "Do what you want to do, honey." I don't care like, about the money. Th like that's what you would say, whatever you felt, right? Yeah. So th that that is that to me is like, I, I agree with that she's not being honest but I, I don't have a problem with that sure. moment because i'm sure that's what she said yeah or like that is like if you're in i mean that's the other thing is like the movie the okay so this is this is a good segue to like 
talking about the thematic mess that is this movie. That's a, there's a lot. So, so Lorman, I'm assuming he lives here in America now. All these motherfuckers end up living in America, or I'm sure he has it's a possible. house around here. It's possible, yeah. Right, but like a lot of um, emigres, right, or uh, foreigners from the Anglophone world, what is he going to talk about? Well, he's going to talk about 20th century America, right, which is a good subject. And I, I'm no jingoist. I think we can all say safely. Uh, I think I, I think I, on that definition of what we consider jingoism, I am no jingoist. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean I'm not even particularly patriotic. But I, I get yeah. this. I understand. You know, it's in the Fourth of July. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand choosing 20th century America as a subject. It's a very juicy subject, it right? Is. The British Empire falls away. You get this bipolar world. The Soviet Union, interesting but in different ways, did not throw up any characters like Elvis. Out of the Soviet Union. Um, yeah, no, no, no so, Russian Elvis. So, so in terms of, like, popular culture, the center of gravity in the 20th century is America, right? I don't think there's any serious argument about that. Even the bands from other places that make it big are emulating American music. Oh, uh, yeah, right? that's quite large, yeah. So, so I get it, right? So he picks Gatsby, probably the quintessential 20th century American novel. Consistent certainly so. one of them, yeah. right? Yeah. Um you know, about kind of a very pivotal time in American history where, where America sort of is emerging as the kind of global superpower that it will later become and sort of the, the cultural and economic center of gravity, mm -hmm. right? Well, then you pick Elvis, right? Certainly no, for, for a 20th century American figure, as iconic as they come, right? Right, there are not many people whose houses I have toured. Yeah. Right. I still haven't. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna well, when change I was that. Quite young. I don't remember much. I remember the gold pa piano and the jungle room. Nice. These are the two things that my youthful brain um, took in. So, so I get it. It's an interesting subject, but it, w w his treatment of America, right, actually reminded me of a lot of foreigners' recent treatments of America, and the one it reminded me the most of a very different movie was Three Billboards. Because mm -hmm. it just seems to me like someone from another part of the Anglophone world who sees America and says, like, oh, it's fucked up there. Mm -hmm. But has no further insight to offer or any real sophisticated yeah. idea of how and why it's fucked up and what precise ways it's fucked up. Yeah. Like, so this movie just keeps on gesturing at issues of race and social justice. And events that really happened, right? I mean, yeah. but has just zero to say about it. And is just such a flat and uninteresting portrayal. I agree. Which is yeah. mirrored by the flat and uninteresting attitude of Elvis towards these things. Which is simply... I mean, El they basically reduce Elvis to, like, the good white liberal, right? Who, like, wants to do something, does something, but doesn't has, do enough. Has everything to do with us. Appar and wishes apparently. He and wishes he did more and feels bad that he didn't do yeah. more. That's it. Sure. And it's just such a... It's, it's like... It's such a boring... And facile and uninsightful. And I wish that, honestly, this shit just hadn't even been in there. Yeah, right? because, I agree. Because, like, he just doesn't have anything interesting to say. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, that stuff is obviously... Like, if you look at more con contemporary movies that have something interesting to say about racial justice in America, um, Get Out is one example, right? The focus there is on people like Elvis and how they're also like good white liberals, right? And how they become, yeah, this pernicious force, right? Yes, yeah, yes. right, yeah. right. But not based on their hatred of black people, but on their love, admiration, or, and that, yes, their envy, envy their sort of cultural yeah. envy of black people, right? Like that's what turns them, right? Yes. Is is wanting to get some sort of. Um, get get extract from black culture kind of what is sexy or attractive or or exciting about it yes without yeah. having to endure the sort of cost cost yeah no right. it's, a, it's a very it's, get out is a very sophisticated movie i would say and uh, racially speaking just to bring up a different context because you brought up a good one uh i'm gonna bring up a bad movie in the conversation but it's better at what it does than this movie in this context and that's green book 
Green Book approaches race <laughs> in a far more sophisticated manner and Oscar wants winner. to Oscar, Oscar winner, uh, and, but wants to say something at its heart that is kind of generic and sophomoric and uh, pr- pretty. You know, it's it's just sim- simple. It's simple minded, but it has a heart. You could say, you know, maybe maybe a bit misguided in its heart uh, ultimately, but uh, that at least has a purpose. Bringing up race in this movie. Has zero purpose, and, and, in fact, and in fact, in a way that renders it almost more offensive because it's yes. just like it's just another motif. Yeah, and really, it exists only in the movie to show us what a good guy Elvis is because yeah. he wants to go to the juke joints. He yeah. wants to go to the the places where no other white people will go. Yeah, and like you know, I mean, like I said, I don't, you know, these this this shit about you know who who deserves what for what they did. And cultural appropriation and all that. It's been talked about so much. Yeah. I don't I don't have anything interesting to add to it. No, it's fair. But this movie definitely doesn't. This definitely movie has not. this movie this movie it's just such a facile I keep coming back to that word, but I think it's true. Like it, it just it just sort of gestures at all this stuff, but it doesn't have any and it like once again, there's another movie. Yeah. Right, that you could make about Elvis's early life and his engagement with black culture and all the nuances and complications of that. Yeah. Right? Because you could always, you know, you can always say, well, you know, what well, was it good? Was it bad? Did Elvis steal from people or did he blaze a trail that then, I mean, let's be honest, like someone like Little Richard did did pretty well for himself, he did. right? He did. And like, does, does, um, does Elvis playing that music then kind of kick open a door that later on helps other people go yeah. through? I mean, who knows? I don't have the answer to that, but like, there's an interesting movie there that really gets in the into the sort of complexities of that part of his life, that part of his story, that part of American history, right? But it was it's just it's just another it's just another sort of aesthetic yeah. thing. That just kind of comes out of nowhere and goes, goes back to goes it. back to nowhere, yeah. and well, and to me that's just it, like yeah, that's just another well, it's offensive. I agree with you. <laughs> it's it because it it's not only that it does nothing with it. You, I I think offense offensive and uh, damaging could be especially in a storytelling style and especially in the, the content and the the capability that it has at its heart. Uh, I think it does more than nothing. Like it does damage to the story. It does damage to Elvis. It does damage to our understanding and engagement because what they're doing is they're reducing that as a feature and not as anything more. Yeah, than and, it. and the only thing that Elvis does is problematic. Like I said earlier, is not as much as he th- knows. He oh should. yes, absolutely. His sin is knowing the right thing but not always doing it. Yeah, right and. And to me, that's just that's extremely simplistic. It is. It is. And, and like I said, I don't. I'm not saying I think. I mean, yeah. This this dude was a fucking kid when he bre- breaks out. Like, I don't. I'm not saying I think there was some cynical like he's sitting there thinking, "Ha ha, I'm yeah. going to go." You know, like like he's like um like he's like Vanilla Ice, like growing up in relative privilege and deciding to like style himself in such a way as to be like urban or something like yeah. that. I, I yeah. don't think that's what happened. Well, but but I do think that like the truth is that in the, in that situation and once again this kind of goes back to the idea of the this is really a story of all the interesting movies you could make but didn't with the story. Like instead of f- focusing uh, instead of focusing on the curl you could you could focus on the world around them. Yeah. And right and see Elvis Less as a less as sort of a protagonist and more as like a petri dish, that kind of or like a, yeah. a kind of um, a kind of prism, right? That like that shoots out all these different uh, colors and and images based on what angle you look at him, right? He yeah. he's interested. Like people, like this is the, this is part of the problem with biopics generally, right? Is that like there's different ways in which a person can be interesting. And I'm not 100% certain that Elvis is an interesting person in the sense that, like, I would want to read his autobiography. Mm -hmm. But he is interesting as a cultural thing. Yes. Right? And what makes a cultural thing interesting is how people respond to it. I agree. Not what that person is. Because what that person is doesn't really matter very much. Yes. And I think when that person becomes interesting, take someone like Bob Dylan, they become interesting because they know... 
they have more self-awareness around the role that they play yeah. and decide to respond to it in interesting and somewhat antagonistic ways. And right? what, what you're getting at is essentially what the movie is hoping to articulate in its main theme, and that is the fact that he... The, ultimately the colonel at the end of the movie chastises us the audience for loving elvis or loving the idea of elvis and not letting <laughs> that's, that's him be a, it's, that that is that is to me is a very low ebb of the movie oh yes well but, but that's what they're trying to desperately kind of uh gather it near the end to basically say elvis wasn't allowed by the colonel to be a human being but it's because we loved him so much and we didn't care what he was going through, just what he could give to us. And that is what you're kind of saying, is that he is more important to the culture than he is as a human being. And I'm, I'm giving the movie too much credit to kind of articulate this point. But that's what they want us to walk away with, that, that Elvis was not allowed to be interesting or a person or a human being because we demanded so much from him. And I think one... Lerman is a hypocrite because he's focused so much on the cultural impact or the cultural idea of Elvis versus the human. So he in himself is at fault for, you know, propping up an idea of the person rather than grounding it, venturing it deeply as a tragic, a, a, a true tragic story of, as you said, a child who gets wrapped up in elements out of his control and is used abused uh, for for the sake of popularity for the sake of culture and i think that would be a, a far grander exercise than the mov movie has aims of doing but it, it's definitely the thematic that they want to come around near at the end but the, but the problem is that even there way too much of the movie is wrapped up in this very simplistic um psychodrama yes around yeah who, El who elvis the person yeah which like i said is like at least with the with the other thing like elvis the cultural object elvis the idea there's just more interesting shit there like let's let's talk about a good movie right wag the dog which is a great movie, movie that's all about kind of how culture gets leveraged in different ways and how manipulative sort of the use of culture can be right? ahead of its time that movie we could say oh god <laughs> still very resonant but like but like literally the, the they're just creating like cultural experiences yeah. right yeah like and we don't we're not interested in and the movie is not about like the genesis of these particular things right which couldn't ma which as the movie points out when they invent an old song it couldn't matter less Right, like, we're we're never gonna know whether it was Elvis a hound dog, as he says, right? He tells us who just liked to drink and do drugs and fuck, and eventually that shit caught up with him, as it does for many people. Was he a tortured genius? Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah. He, anything, any of these things could be true, right? I mean, he clearly was talented. Right? Yeah, he, he clearly was. had a very specific sort of talent and magnetism to him. He did, right? But like. You know that aside, right? I mean, there, that doesn't make him interesting. There's no. plenty of talented people who are boring. Yeah, right. And he could have been fucking boring. He could have just been a boring ass dude. In in the sense of, did he have like interesting thoughts, right? Or like, was he someone that you'd want to like, <laughs> you'd want to like hash out? Yeah. Uh, uh, like you'd want to sit around and, and drink coffee or or whiskey with and like talk to for a few hours, right? Or what? However it is, you gauge what makes a person interesting, right? Yeah. Like, but who cares, right? Because what's interesting is the culture that gives rise to him. Or what or what you can... I want to say... I don't want to say what's interesting. He might be interesting. But what you can talk about is the culture that gives rise to him. And the sort of... And the, and the movie is like... Is aware of that. Mm -hmm. It's most interesting thematic... Potential thematic content. Only at very few moments. Yeah. Like the, the when they bring out the I hate Elvis button. Okay. There's the, now you, you show me a little bit that you understand sort of like, okay, this is a culture where we just kind of create and like, and that's some talk about something that's become only more relevant as we go from like one insane culture war to another, yeah. which is only ramping up right now. It is right yeah. in a huge way. Thanks to the Supreme court, like how we just, we just create these just constant tempests, right? We just constant tempest, pop culture tempest. Uh, cultural political tempest right 
we just have this hunger for conflict and drama, right? And we look to celebrities and their lives, right? C.E.G. the Kardashians, right? For this kind of, um, it's like they're they become our royal family, but even more fucked up, you, right? Honestly, the most amount of parallels that I've I saw in Elvis that I walked out going it could have had a more resonant quality is in this what you're saying is that we target some celebrities and we create them into our narrative we weave them into our personal and invested narratives and that's Britney Spears Britney Spears what she has been going through and, and and how her Michael life Jackson too, yeah well that. but like Britney Spears like we're, we're seeing the culmination of those effects and like what that that are still a part of her her life and trying to have a declaration of her own life you definitely feel that in Elvis, just, you know, the strains, the pup, the puppet master, if you will, of on, on this person. And it's and the only times I really felt invested in it is because Austin Butler's performance and it had nothing to do with how the narrative or style or uh, anything else uh, heightened my involvement. It was only his performance and everything was working against it. And I, I, uh, I will go back to saying and applaud him because... Without him, you have nothing in this movie. Well, well but it, it's also about how, uh, along with rock and roll music, right, America's true uh, sort of cultural, important cultural product is professional wrestling, right? And how everything <laughs> is ultimately professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Like, Elvis is just a pro wrestling character. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy, and then he's a bad guy. He's a good guy to some and a bad guy to others. Then he kind of... Uh, he's, yeah. He, then he's kind of the bad guy that's just doing it for the money. Then he's the good guy that's getting back to his roots, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just a pro wrestling narrative, right? It's very Where true. You keep on turning and turning and turning a guy to keep the juice around him, right? That is very, very observant. I think that is very true. And and, and like that's interesting, right? Yeah. That is an interesting story. That's right? the Colonel story, technically. Well, that's because that's, he's the one who's. Got his fingers well, in pro on the wrestling, pulse. You of them. have managers, you think, right? You have well, managers. Who's the guy who come out with the Undertaker for the longest time? I forget his name. He's a big guy, uh, uh, but I'm forgetting his name. Uh, well, right well there's Paul Heyman, who's the manager for many people. Like he's been oh, Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, yeah. And he's, you know, he, he, but like, so you have, but even that's part of the act, right? Yeah, which is, it which is. is. Which is an interesting. That would be another interesting way. But once again, you'd have to not do this weird POV thing with the colonel, and you could actually leave it to the audience to decide: were these guys in it yes, together? Yeah. Were they? Were they? Were, was he a true villain, or were they kind of both playing the same game? I would have. Right? I, I, and as you're saying that, I almost would have preferred a movie that, again, with Elvis. Ambig ambiguity of who he is, is uh, which I think I think is a hundred percent true. I don't think we know who Elvis I'm, was. I'm I don't think I don't think his family gives us any sort of idea of what kind of family man he was or what they meant to him. I don't think anybody who worked but, with him knew who he was. Make that an interesting movie because I I think but I think the movie you can make interesting is like imagine if the POV was Priscilla or imagine if it was like rotating around people who were neither the Colonel nor Elvis. Yeah, right. People just observing them. Yeah, and just. Or even invent a character, like an investigative journalist or something, right? Invent a character, right? Uh, or, like, make a composite character. Someone who's observing it, right? And trying to yeah. figure out what's going on. Sure. Because all we know... Because what this movie is basically telling us is Elvis was pure and good and was manipulated by the colonel. And the colonel is probably bad, but he's ambiguous enough that we don't completely hate him or we're willing to at least follow his story. Because there's a, there's a colonel pun intended, of truth to what he is saying, right? About <laughs> and, and even Elvis knows that, right? Yeah. Because the the colonel is the villain, but they have to make him like a little bit sympathetic and interesting, because otherwise, the movie really breaks down, right? Yeah. Because he's got to carry so much of it. He does, right? Yeah. He has to carry the kind of narrative thrust of the story. So we have to at least have a little bit of sympathy for him and a little bit of a sense, like, like basically we see him as Elvis sees him, right? Which is yeah. like a yes. problematic guy but maybe but someone who is effective at what he does and maybe and who's probably right about a lot of things in mm -hmm. terms of how to make money and how to sort of sell um something sell a person sell an experience sell an idea right i mean and and it, it he is a little bit ahead of his time in the sense that 
you know, now it just seems so obvious, but the, the sort of, the knowledge that sex sells and how to sell sex was something that was sort of just emerging yeah. with Elvis. Right? Yeah, I it agree. wasn't Now they've pretty much figured it out, right? But but at this point, they were still kind of like, how can we sell sex without being too raunchy? How can we make it, you know, how can we thread that needle to, like, mm-hmm. sell sex without running afoul of all these people? Uh and the colonel seemed to have an inherent sense of how you would do that. And, he did. And, you know, so he, he gets to have a certain amount of grudging respect, you know, even though he's the bad guy. Even though, but yeah. like, But a more interesting movie lets us resolve the question, or leaves ambiguous the idea of yeah. whether these two were ultimately in cahoots and seeing eye to eye, more or less, versus whether... It was the manipulation that the movie suggests. Yeah. Or the movie says. I mean, yeah. Movie he was essentially out of I his mean, it, control. It ends with cards basically saying, like, yeah, this was the bad guy and he had to pay for it eventually. Eventually. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Because it, 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 does, it, it does strike a very black and white tone, uh, generally speaking. And that's kind of uninteresting for a two hour, 40 minute movie to leave it to be I- explicitly stated. Well, and that's for what you. makes this like a bad superhero movie is that it's frenetic and overwhelming but also in, in some deep sense just dull dull it's a yes. dull movie yeah and it's trying to it, it's throwing everything at the wall at you in order to for you to not necessarily understand that it's dull because it's it, it is it is hyper stylized as distraction it, it has a breakneck speed of uh, narration and of of historical, I mean the 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 amount of historical information uh, and uh, biography information that is thrown at you for dates and events and things that are happening is is bonkers. And so it you never get grounded, you never get rooted, and you're always going to be in the clouds. Like it, it's it, it it launches you into the stratosphere, and you never find a semblance of yourself in how you feel about these characters how you feel about this narrative it is just a onslaught of an experience and nothing more but but, but the problem is that i agree with you but the that aesthetic insanity is for is even compromised by the very simplistic yes yeah uh, like i said there's all these motifs and themes that are gestured at but at the end, the core of it is just a very simplistic take. Like, it is really very Elvis simplistic. Elvis is a good dude. Yeah. He's a good dude who gets used. And it's just, uh, who cares? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's true. I don't, I mean, who? Th- no, we, the truth is that, like, but that's why I find movies like this fundamentally boring. Because th- that question is uninteresting to me because it's lost to the sands of time. I agree. Right? And it's also lost, like, I don't even know why I do what I do. Right? Like I maybe I've manipulated you into doing this fucking podcast with me. It's I don't, probably true. I don't know with with, <laughs> with with my sexual magnetism, right? You have it. Like so it's, like it's like there. I don't know why you. I don't know why I do what I do most of the time or some of the time. I can make only a guess. I have literally no idea why anyone else does what they do. Yeah. All I can say, based on um, being a human, right, is that. Um, it's easy to, if you have the opportunity available to you, it's easy to rationalize following certain dark impulses, right? Like, so, so if, when Elvis decided to keep abusing drugs or fucking around or whatever he did that we would say, well, that's not so great Mm -hmm. either for moral reasons or just for health reasons. Sure. Yeah. You know, you take that drink, you take that pill, you have that sex and you just kind of find a reason why it's okay or good or whatever, right? That's a pretty common human phenomenon. I'm yeah. assuming most, if not all, people have experienced that doing something that in their heart of hearts they knew they probably shouldn't do. Could and, even be and, just eating a pint of ice cream, and I'm yeah. not just saying that because I did it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've all been there, right? <laughs> and so I'm sure that there's an element of that, right? Like at that moment, you want what you want. And you come up with some reason why it's okay or good even. It's righteous, whatever. Mm-hmm. Why would anyone deny it to you? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. I'm sure there was some of that. The question of whether Elvis... To what extent Elvis was in on the con, right? Is is interesting. But it's interesting 
for us to think about and to look at. Yeah. More than it is interesting to offer up an answer. I agree. Right? Because this movie offers up an, all kinds of answers, right? It's yeah. a very simple answer. Like I said, Elvis was a good guy. He was tortured by both the colonel and his own desire to be loved vis-a-vis some sense of abandonment, right? First by his father and then his mother, right? For different reasons. So he's just unproblematically good and tragic. Mm-hmm. Right? That's That's it. That's who he is. Who cares, right? Who cares? Like, I don't care. I don't have any investment. I, I mean, people who care about, like, the, their heroes or their celebrities, whatever, that, that's that's also an American sickness. But, but the problem is... That the, it the, is a sickness, the, the, yeah. the movie can't get into that because the movie is hagiography, hey, right? So it, it is, it can't, yeah. yeah. It can't, so when it turns the camera on us, it's like, you loved him and it's your fault. As opposed to saying, like, why the fuck do you care about this guy? Mm-hmm. Like, why do you care about him... Like, you could care about his cultural output and find it moving. Yeah. Right? You could care about him as a human in the same way you'd care about anyone and be like, well, I hope he's doing okay. But, like, this obsession with people, right, who you don't know mm-hmm. and who will never know you, right, is fucking weird and creepy. It is. Yeah. And it's gross. But the movie is um, about. The movie has nothing to say about that. Yeah. Because it is obsessed with Jennifer. It is. It's equally obsessed while also being trying to be chastising. And I can't take that uh, as a credible motif. I can't take that as a credible perspective. And it was... Uh, uh, when, when that movie ended, I mean, it was wild to experience. Mostly because my jaw dropped in the first three minutes. That I couldn't believe stylistically this is how it was being approached. Um, and an hour. Can you really in, not believe it? I mean, I, I have to say, like, I had an idea. You know, knowing, knowing who Lorman is, like, no, no, I, I had my senses of what it would be like, but I was like, oh, the, they're, they're not going to ground us ever in any, any idea, and, and any moments that are uh, attempts at that uh, on the tarmac with uh, Priscilla, you know, in the car, is one of their attempts. At that point, you have not given me enough. Uh, it, w- through performance and through the construction of that story for me to care about that moment between those two people because it just comes off as empty and hollow like most of the movie. So my, my surprise was in how hollow it was going to be. My realization on how hollow the exercise and the uh, the mining of this character they've chosen. You, you know who would be an interesting POV character would be one of the, like, some compositor, one of those hippie producers, right, who meets him right when he wants to get back. Yes. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Like, because that's when the movie got at the one, one thing that I thought that was interesting that I don't know that anyone has really gotten at as well. It's like, you basically, it's like the blueprint that has been perfected by Rick Rubin, which is like the Back to the Roots album. Yes, right. Yeah. He did it for Johnny Cash, did it for Tom Petty, probably did it for a bunch of other people. Like, yeah, they're like I'm gonna get back to doing the real shit. Bruce Springsteen, also a master of this. I'm getting back to doing the real shit. Yeah, kind of yes. as a marketing move, right? And it's like the sort of weirdness of ideas of authenticity, right? Like, when you make a conscious decision to do something that's more quote-unquote authentic, right? Because <laughs> because that's what the people want. Yeah. That's what you know will move. Yeah. Right? And that's why the, the sort of... Because there is a kind of, like, there is a very classical artistic... The, his artistic path has a kind of nice classic arc to it where you have... You have the Edenic state, which is the early Elvis, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have that kind of destroyed by doing the movies, right? And becoming this kind of um, Cartoon, cartoonish or, yeah. figure. And then you kind of right the ship by going back to your roots. And then your your encore is to do this Vegas show, which maybe at its best was like the full apotheosis of who you were. Of who he was, you yeah. yeah. Right, so classic very classic arc but like it's interesting enough and you throw the modern twist of saying like what is really going on there is does he really want to get back to his roots or is it just a cynical marketing play sure yeah right and if you and if that's the sort of core of the movie is is thinking about kind of the selling of authenticity right because in a way elvis is you know i don't know if you have you ever seen the wrecking crew 
Yeah, the documentary. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like that's one thing the movie. I'm talks a huge about. fan of Carol Kay as a bassist. Like, yeah, so. but sort of th- that idea of like, well, all of a sudden the musicians wanted to play their own instruments, and it became about singer songwriters, right? And not just like, yeah, bands as a product. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like, like band, a band is just something like we put together. It doesn't fucking matter who it is. And as the center of gravity shifts, right? Sort of like, um, we see Elvis at a moment. You know, and there's that little montage about the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, which, like, once again is another idea that just comes out of nowhere and goes to nowhere. Goes nowhere, yeah, yeah. But, like, seeing Elvis as, like, this potentially savvy operator who understands something the Colonel doesn't understand about where the culture is going and how he can sort of rework himself to tap into the, the shifting cultural landscape of the 60s, the late 60s. Okay, there, now we're getting somewhere. Because now we're looking at Elvis not as like a tragic hero, but as like a savvy operator. Yeah. Right? Yes. Who, yeah. Who sort of sees something and is able to respond to it in a way that the colonel misses. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. That's the core of an interesting story. Can be. Right? Like like Elvis is a wa- as a washed up movie star, like kind of trying to like find his footing in a new world and succeeding at doing so. Yeah. Right? Having a real success at it. Um, okay. Yeah. But, like, the the movie just doesn't, it doesn't have the, the wherewithal to, it doesn't. to see what, to see where there's actually something interesting going yeah, on. Yeah, it doesn't have the wherewithal, and again, its trajectory, it, it, it really had these, I think, simplistic ideas of what they wanted to tackle, and they imbued in that. Uh, through that that narrative choice of what the arc you explained that makes sense in a way to to deal with these these moments that are challenging or could be interpreted as uh, cynical marketing ploys they don't necessarily have an idea they don't have their mind wrapped around all of these individual themes this is like six movies in one uh, you could you could do one theme and make it prominent for one feature. You could tackle two, maybe three, but it's like six different movies, you know, balancing these ideas of race, of culture, of sexuality, of of control, of marketing, of identity. You know the other identity. way this is a fucking superhero movie is that it's all at the end of the day just fucking fan service. It really like is. The, the Elvis people, I guess, want to see Elvis's life. Like, if you were to create a movie, if you were to write a fictional movie, right? You would almost never write it this way, which is to say, as just kind of a more or less linear narrative of a person's life. Yeah, right. Yeah, you never for thought, sure. oh, that's going to be the most interesting story, <laughs> right? Like, unless, unless there was, unless it was the nature of, unless that was the story, right? Like, yeah, like like Benjamin Button and they're aging backwards or some shit like that, right? <laughs> but like, you would never, you, you know. Like or like even like take up one of your favorite movies that we've talked about twice now, Barry Lyndon. That's pretty epic and sweet. But even then, we're picking our spots, right? We are. We're picking our yeah. spots, right? You would never just say like, okay, we basically just need to tell this character's life story. You're always picking, even if it's a very character-driven thing where it's about this one. And I don't mean character-driven in the sense that every story is character-driven. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In the sense like, oh, it's about this one person, you know, like. Like, imagine if you were telling um, Michael Clayton and you wanted him to do a quote-unquote biopic of Michael Clayton where you're like, okay, let's meet him as a child. And then, <laughs> like, like, you would never make that you movie. you imagine? You would never make that movie because <laughs> no, that's not what's interesting. You, yeah. you, you, you know, it's the old screenwriting thing, arrive late, leave early, right? Like, what's interesting here? Yeah, yeah. Show me what's interesting. Yeah. And th- they have made a mistake by thinking But biopics just... make this mistake all the time, they right? They do, we they do. coming back to this, like... You decide, oh, it's a biopic. It needs to be a biography. That mean, I guess that means it basically starts when they're born and ends when they die. And that's right? just like, not where the interesting stuff is. And and they 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 equate the history of the person because they they think that's interesting because of who the person is, not because they are like, actually interesting. Like, like, and I keep and this is this is a biopic I come to as a good biopic. The Queen is a good biopic. It's a very we, interesting one. We yeah. see her at a very interesting moment, and we really get into her at this. Yeah. particular moment and it's like and it's not even maybe the moment you would expect right no it's like how does she respond to this crisis yeah right and it's like and i i find the i find queen elizabeth to be a much less interesting character 
Although I guess she is interesting in Elvis in the sense that a lot of people are obsessed with her. I yeah, there is so, a weird obsession to yes. the royalty. Yeah, but like, but like, let's pick this very specific moment and really look closely at it. Yeah, and make a tight movie. Well, in, in, in the same way, thing. in the same way they did with Spencer, like you know, yes. in, in surveying yes. Princess Diana in a in a particular moment and. The surrealism around that, you know, the the we the really getting into the emotions of her anxiety, being at that dinner table, being at the at celebrating this particular Christmas, what what her relationship means to her husband, this family, all in those moments, her children, and again, it it might not be realistic in the sense that we 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 have these ideas and notions that. When you depict something in cinema, something like Walk the Line is realistic or that it is true to that person in their tale. When they, they're making things up, I mean, uh, his first wife was black like, or and, and they make her white in the movie. That's not real. That's not truth. Uh, and they do it for a service of something else that they're trying to get at. But Spencer's getting at a different kind of truth, like a, a truth of the feeling, a truth of the mental and psychological state of somebody and trying to kind of mine that interesting material for what this this person who again also you could say like Elvis was put into the spotlight you know put, where where everyone had these notions and interpretations of who that person was and they're trying to subvert the what is the cultural understanding of this person and what is the personal yes. understanding well, of this and, person and the genius of something like Spencer which is a movie that very much knows exactly what it is. And, and what it it's does. Trying. It does. And yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Lorraine in that movie is he, and, and Stuart, right? Could, both, clearly both of them deserve a lot of credit for that movie. Yeah. Clearly a very um, collaborative type movie, yeah. right? Yeah. Driven by same a, a He director. did the same thing with Jackie, too. Yes. Like Natalie Portman brought out something of a an interesting interpretation of who we understand who uh, you know Jackie Kennedy is and mines a more interesting story based off of a moment. Yes. A specific moment. Yeah, but also it's pretty clear that what Spencer is, or like one reading of it is, it's not about Diana. It's about how someone who was sympathetic to her would imagine her life was That's, like. That's, yes, yeah. Like what would it have, like if you were to ask yourself, what would it have been like to be that person? And to be in that what, family. And not, not what it would have been like in the sense of what events would have happened, because the events are very banal. What would it have felt like? Yeah. What would have been the the phenomenological experience? Yeah. Of in being in that moment with those people. Yeah. Right. And and it would, fe- would, it would it feel like felt? a Lynch movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's essentially it what it comes. It felt out. like you were in the middle of a David Lynch movie. Yeah. Which has plausibility to it whether it's true or not who cares yeah it's plausible it is and it gives you a way to think about this person who is thrust into the situation in ways that are interesting yeah yeah and that make you think like, oh yeah and that is getting at something and about I, how gross this whole thing is. absolutely and i think you could have tapped into again we, you there's many moments in elvis where you'd be like this is where the movie should have anchored us and we would dance around the character or the ideas of the thematics that yeah, are being introduced. Thrust around it. Yeah, thrust around. We would gyrate. Gyrated into it. But that that's those are the decisions that you need to do, and the, they make for a more interesting focus on character and person that Elvis just they do the exact opposite. They they do everything and because they do everything it amounts to nothing. And that is yeah. a big problem. Yeah, you think I mean I feel like the first rule of biopics would be just like just make a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like you want to tell a story, what's the story you want to tell and what's the most interesting way to tell it? Exactly. Right? And like it's just never going to be like this kind of a survey. Yeah. Right, which at the end of the day is just a slog. It's slog. It slogs. Even even as much energy they try and force into it doesn't help. It doesn't work, and it's a slog. It's a slog, and uh, you learn nothing. You yeah. get nothing. It's 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 a really unfortunate. I mean, I feel like a good litmus test is just like movie, just just yeah. write write down on a piece of paper like what what's the treat what's a one page treatment for this? Yeah, it's boring. It's boring. It's yeah. boring. Absolutely. You know, like it, and it's just a simple test. But I, I guess I guess when you're him and you got Tom Hanks attached and I don't know I, this movie must have cost a lot of money to make. I think so. I yeah, mean, I it doesn't it doesn't look like it was cheap. It does not look like it was cheap. Um, it's like I guess you just do what you want to do. Yeah. But I mean, 
It comes back to you know the the, the old the old uh, my my often referenced uh, breakdown uh, fundraising speech from Bullworth, where it's like you guys make a lot of movies. They got sex in them. They got violence in them. But so many of them, they're just not very good. <laughs> they're <laughs> just true. not very good. It's true. Well, and this is uh, you know I thought this was going to be the more interesting conversation because even though it was the one I least liked uh, two weeks ago, I watched three movies in that week. It was the one I least liked, but I thought it was the more interesting well, conversation. Well, we found plenty to talk we about. We found plenty to talk about. Because the others were like, oh, that was good enough. And then the other one was, that was fine. And I found my indifference to both of those experiences uh, vastly inferior to my rabid dislike for this movie. Well, I mean, so, I mean, I guess I guess in a way we're, we're sort of giving Lorman at least an at, an element of what he wants, which is that he clearly sees himself as some sort of provocateur. And in, we were, in some in, sense. And yeah. we were indeed provoked. I was provoked into something, I, I, well, I, I he suppose. Well, he knows that that's the whole I hate Elvis thing. Like, well, it, maybe they'll hate it, and that's good, too. That's hate good is better. Too. Hate, hate is better than indifference, hate right? That's better. sort of, that's kind of the showman's credo, right? It's, it's like, true. If if they love you and hate you, that's good. And if they some love you, others will probably hate you. In that way, I would say that Elvis is is less of an Elvis movie because you essentially walk away not understanding who he was, and I don't think you possibly could. But you do walk away understanding who Lerman is, and that that I think shows that there, this is a huge vanity and ego projection. I think on him, he th as you said, and equating it, he sees himself as the provocative artist but i mean i i mean maybe i mean all art is fundamentally that and certainly there's plenty of movies we love that are clearly i mean you brought up lynch you know i'm i'm a great lover of him i mean i don't i don't know that putting your weird ass visions on the screen is any less you know narcissistic or no. whatever word you vain yeah this is narcissistic right? it's vain than, it's egoistic than, yeah than anything else Sure. Or Kubrick, for that matter, right? I mean, not, definitely those three th three things but describe like, but him. But like yes. the question, <laughs> you know, it's what, what did Christopher Hitchens say? Like, yeah, to to good writing is just about having like a good voice. And yeah, if you write in your voice, yeah, the, you know, it might be great. The question is, how good is your voice? Yeah. When he <laughs> like like it's you, you can... undeniable, he has a voice, Lerman. Like, oh, there's it's... there's no doubt, right? I mean, this doesn't. This this is you know we we come back to this idea of like is this even a movie in the sense that it conveys someone's vision? No doubt this is that, but um, it's just not it's just not very good. I like, agree. Like he doesn't like the the movie the movies that we've talked about that we like right whether it's Spencer, um, the Queen, whatever. These are movies where someone had something whatever like i don't know how you gauge it right it's very hard but it's did you have something interest did, like like when you looked at the thing what did you see and was it interesting mm -hmm. was it compelling yeah right was it you know was it, was it did you get at something kind of did you reach your hand into it and get at something deep and interesting right and you know that's the kind of ineffable quality of great movies, right? Yeah. Did the person making it and the people involved in making it, did they grab a hold of something, yeah. right? Did they grab a hold of something? I think the and, answer here is no. And here I think we both answer no, yeah. right? Definitely not. It's like, Because it's just, yeah, it's, it, it, it... Yeah, it's... It's not even style over substance. It's... It's a style in, it's it's a complete lack of substance. Yeah, and in a style that doesn't even serve what little substance is on. All I agree. Of I agree because this the, you could make a very stylish movie that accentuates and complements the idea of the stylish notion of what who Elvis was in a. Uh, performative sense and that that mixes in and i think that comes in i think those qualities could mesh well but this is also c trying to disguise based off of the lack of mining of human humanism uh the lack of mining of character of culture even like they're really not trying here and and but and yet trying to introduce all of these things that they think that they are getting at 
but ultimately it's just empty. Well, it's interesting right, because the style that Lorman ultimately goes for it would actually be well served to like a certain version of the movie that I'm talking about, which is about I agree. us yeah. looking at yes. Elvis from afar. I, I think right. that would complement but, it. But, but, you, but then you interweave that shit with this attempt to have an intimate biopic, which is also just completely... Like, this is, like, on the level of, like, a, a Hallmark movie shit. Yes. Where it's just yeah. such a simplistic and saccharine... Like, like the biopic... Saturated, ...is just yeah. so saccharine. Yeah. Right? Because, like I said, he's just a purely good, tragic figure corrupted by an evil man in the cruel world. Yeah. Right? Which is so boring. <laughs> right? And yeah. the way Attempt to Make It Not Boring comes with this insane pastiche that like i said it could honestly could work could. if the whole point was to view these characters from a distance and from the view of the popular culture i, I agree versus I agree. to actually also include this like intimate biopic so it's, it's just its it, point of view is 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 wrong so it's just it's just like two movies which don't work together with a bunch of other little movies inside them, <laughs> ingrained in them that yeah. also don't work. That don't, yeah. It's it's like it's like we're yeah, it's like some sort of like a movie inside a movie, like natural born killers shit going on as well. That also doesn't work. <laughs> Similar stylistic hits there. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just so many things, and they're all not very good yeah it's unfortunate but you know like we said credit to butler for trying for trying for doing a, an admirable job if of... he if he gets nominated i will not complain but it's we we were talking about that it will probably get nominated for something like editing this year because it has the most editing it's getting nominated <laughs> for the so most many... editing. <laughs> this is points for points for like the number of times you had to do an edit <laughs> wow you really did a lot of cuts <laughs> good on you because that's, that's how a they for interpret effort. it. Yeah, right. A for effort. Well, I, I think we can both say we don't re necessarily recommend this movie, but uh, it certainly was a you unique You probably have seen it if you're going to see it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, you, you, you know, I don't know. Do it, live your life. I guess, you uh, <laughs> I guess next week, uh, I guess uh, for up-to-date Cinefile, we're going to focus on one movie a week. Well, we, and, I, uh, we, you know, depending, there's no, depending. There's no, uh, no maps for these territories, no rules. I, I suppose we'll talk about the Thor movie, and then we'll talk Thor, about whatever else is on our minds. Yeah, Thor Love and Thunder next week. I think we'll, we'll get into that. And uh, and any other updates? Uh, any Anything else going on? Nothing on my end. I'm just... You're pushing chilling. forward on I know You're movies still, yeah, yeah go to the sub stack go to dead reckoner sub stack there's always excitement there uh, sometimes more than others but I guarantee you at least some excitement the audio for this will be on there maybe some more podcasts some writing who knows all right but uh yeah you know go go listen to I know movies and you don't the back, back catalog a lot of great stuff new always good new stuff a lot of stuff coming uh, out. look yeah. for the episodes that involve me or movies you like <laughs> or movies you like absolutely uh well ben thalen thanks for coming over thanks for doing this and for those yeah uh if you listened you watched thank you so much we appreciate it uh and we'll we'll see you next time